Over there, hiding behind a bush. <laughs> the tiger, kids, is like nature's own pantry. And what is the richest, most filling time to be in the forest? What time? Lunch time? No. <laughs> the most generous time is the autumn season. Autumn in Tiger. I hate autumn. Leo, move over. Snake! There's a snake! Snake? Snake! Ah! There's a snake! Where? Over there, under that tree! Right! So huge and angry! It almost bit off my tail. Tig, are you sure you saw it? Of course I'm sure. I almost lost my tail. <laughs> you chickens. You got scared of an empty snakeskin. Come over here. Do not be afraid. Mappa, so the snake is now crawling around completely naked? Like a plain earthworm? But why? No, kids, no. The snake sheds its old skin and crawls out of it, wearing a new one. Huh, that's a neat trick. I wish I could do that. Whenever your coat gets dirty, all you gotta do is take it off and carry on. <laughs> Mappa Pandiga, how did the snake learn to shed its old skin? Mmm, that's a very interesting story. <clears throat> Have a seat and listen. Once upon a time, there lived a great snake, the king of all snakes. But he grew very old and couldn't see well or even crawl anymore. So the great snake ordered his subjects to find a cure for old age. The snakes shot off in all directions. They searched every deep crevice and every underground cave, but found nothing. The last one to come back was the whip snake, carrying a secret root. The great snake ate the root and crawled out of his old skin. Once again, he was young, strong, and healthy. The great snake was very happy. After that, he made it so that a shiny trail is left wherever the whip snake crawled. Mappa Pandiga, what was the name of that magical root? Oh, that root was ginseng. Ha <laughs> ha! The sun! Finally! <laughs> Mappa Pandiga, let's go to... Uh, to eat some grapes! Oh! I'm a little under the weather. Oh, and my back hurts. Mappa Pandiga, what's wrong with you? <gasps> Poor Mappa Pandiga. It looks like he came down with something. We have to help him. Totally. But how? I know how. We are going to find that magical root. Remember? It can cure everything. Right, Leo. Let's go find that... Uh, Singji. Uh, but where do we find it? Oh, is this it? No, Teague. This is a Manchurian walnut. Haven't you listened to anything Mappa told us? We have been looking for this root for an hour. Maybe the thing doesn't exist. I think I found it. <laughs> Follow me. Oh, wow. It's like in a fairy tale. These marks are left by the whip snake. We could track him down. Right, and then ask him to help find the magical root. To cure our mappa. Uh, uh, guys, I think I'm scared. Oh, wow. The 
This must be the Whip Snake's lair. I don't think that Whip Snake is home right now. So let's just get out of here. No, we came here to get ginseng for our mapa, and we need to find it. Leo, what if there's no ginseng here either? Don't say that. Of course there is, and we'll find it. Well then, I'm just gonna wait for you guys here. I don't like swamps. I mean, I'm allergic. <laughs> Who's a leech here? Which one of you is the most delicious? No, no, we don't taste good at all. Yeah, I'm bitter and sour. Silly kids. Why would you march into the swamp? We're really <gasps> sorry. We just needed the magical root. It's for a good cause, to help someone. <coughs> Our Mapa Pandiga, he got really sick. Can cure any disease. You know Mapa Pandiga? Right, I remember him as he was still a bear cub. Well, hop on. I'll give you a ride. Now, wait. Take it, and say hello from me to Mapa. We sure will, Mr. Whipsnake. Thank you, Mr. Wise Whipsnake, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Snake. See you later. See you. <sighs> even have to climb this mountain when we could be at home right now playing games. And look, look at the sky. I think it's gonna rain. I really hate autumn. Okay, we've arrived. 
Look at how majestic oh, our so tiger wild. is in autumn. Woohoo! The view is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you know what I always say, right? Autumn is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> tiger can not only give you food, but also medicine. The Silver River. Are you sick? Oh, no. I was just having such a dream. A dream? What was it about? I was flying over a silver river. And it was so awesome. <laughs> a flying leopard? I like to see that. <laughs> and then? What happened then? And then? And then Tig woke me up. Oh, hey, Leo. I think I know where you can find your silver river. <gasps> the Silver River! Just like in my dream! <gasps> Whoa! Leo, Leo, no, Leo! <laughs> this is just a bunch of moths. Come on, Leo, there's no reason to get so upset. It was just a dream. It wasn't just any dream. It was the best dream ever. And I was flying in it. Oh, dear, we've upset our friend. And on his birthday, too. Um. Mapa Pandiga, can we ask you for some advice? Today is Leo's birthday. Um. And he really um. wants to see the Silver River really badly. So I tried to take him to a river as a present, but it failed. The Silver River? <laughs> Few animals get a chance to see it. So, wait a minute, Mapa. Does the Silver River really exist? Let me tell you a story. A long, long time ago, there was a salmon named Mazu. He was swimming around the seas and rivers, maintaining peace and order and helping those in need. Mazu came to have many friends, but one day he saw a bird soaring over the river and also wanted to fly. Mazu jumped up but couldn't take off and fell back into the water. He then became sad and descended to the very bottom. Mazu's friends wanted to help him after all the good he's done. So they asked the river to make his dream come true. The river then turned silver and lifted him up, and the salmon started flying above the water. Ever since that time, once in his life, every salmon follows his dream upriver but only those who've earned true friendship by doing good deeds are fortunate enough to find the Silver River. You've already made Leo the most important and most valuable gift in the world, and Leo will soon realize that. You just need to practice patience and give your friend Leo some more time. Guys, you've heard the round one. They've gone and given the spotted one the most valuable gift in the world. We have to take that gift away. <laughs> <laughs> and how can we take it if we don't know what it is? We'll make sure the spotted one gives it to us by choice. <laughs> we'll lure him into the most dangerous place we can find. And then you'll give him a scare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Crazy. save him. Yeah. And then he will give me that valuable thing as a thank you. <laughs> and, and what is that dangerous place? It's uh, the Black Rock. Wow, the, the Black, Black Rock. Rock! What was the Spotty dreaming of? <laughs> to see the Silver River. 
<laughs> so that's what he's going to see. <laughs> Leopards don't fly. But I did fly. Oh, hi, Leo. <laughs> uh, great weather today, isn't it? Uh, you know, in this weather, the Silver River looks especially cool. The Silver River? Martin, did you just say the Silver River? Have you seen it? Oh, sure. I could show it to you if you want. Wow! Of course I want to! Leo! Leo! Where could he go? Leo! Uh, hey, watch it, okay? Oh, I can see Leo! And the Martins. Where are they going? They are marching towards the Black Rock. What? Towards the Black Rock? Hmm, something's not right. Come on, we have to follow them. <laughs> There, to the very edge. I can't see anything. Yeah. 
far away, in the infinitely vast expanses of the sky, high above the tallest mountains and the prettiest clouds, way up high is where the red deer lives. Sometimes he ventures down to the ground. The patter of his hooves makes the sound of thunder, while the gleaming of his silver antlers makes the lightning. Being always hungry, he tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees as if they were grass blades. Nobody is safe from him. So if you see the red deer, Run! <laughs> so there, that is how the story goes, kids. The Red Deer. You see? We're building a house dam, obviously. Stay out of our way. And two, three, yeah. Whoa, look at that! It's a bridge! I've never been on the other side of the river before. <laughs> More reason, then, to check it out. Do you mind if we cross here, Mr. Beaver? Sure, go ahead. Just be careful. No, we can't do that. My mom says... No, she doesn't. You're just afraid. Stop making excuses. Tig, come on. Afraid? Me? I'm not afraid of anything. Hey, don't just stand there. Get back to work. Ugh. Oh, wow. Look at that giant tree. I've never seen anything so huge. Ah, oh, the great cedar, the father of the forest. Looks like a regular old tree. Let's go. Uh, what if it doesn't want us to go any farther? <laughs> yeah, right. You make it sound as if the tree is magical or something. You don't know. What if it is magical? <laughs> Bunch of chickens. Me? Let's go. <laughs> Told you. Nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Sure. Just a bunch of birds. Hey, what's wrong? 
That's what the magical tree tried to warn us about. He tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees. So if you see the red deer... where you are. Marty! You hear me? Marty! Oh. <laughs> we need to leave! So long. I hope they didn't get lost. Oh, no. Oh, look! Look! Over there! There's someone running! <gasps> Marty! Oh, that's my Marty! Mommy! I'm here! The trees are gonna burn down! Come on, come on, come on! And two, and three, yeah! And again! The red deer! It's too close! Oh, we're not gonna make it! Jump on the log, quick! Marty! Uh -oh. Leo, do we really have to go in the water? Take again! Really? <laughs> It's just that it's a little too wet. Tig, paddle on! Uh, Are you all right? 
I was looking for you everywhere. The Red Deer is not to be trifled with. Mappa Pandiga, we are fine. You should have seen us take down the Red Deer. And we saved the 